OK, uh, so now let's talk about another important um, um, perspective of uh, color is called the color vision deficiency. So when we are going to use color in data visualization, so we should be very careful that there are many people that um, they have the CVD. So this is an example that people that uh, are with normal color vision so that how they can see the, the apples from this uh, green table. And on the right side, you can see the people that with CVD. So how they see, how they uh, perceive uh, the apples with, from this green table. So our eyes have three types of the sensitive cones. OK, and each cone is responsible for specific wavelength range uh, from the visible uh, uh, band of the light. Uh, we have a short, medium, and also long, uh, long cones, where medium is, res is more sensitive to green colors, and also long cones are more sensitive to the red colors. And uh, so the people with uh, CVD, they either missing one of those cones, or they have a weak cone. So for example, if people missing this long cone, so that will be a, a red blind. And we can say that one out of 100 male person uh, are right blind. And if people have a weak uh, median cone, and that person will be green weak. And five out of 100 male are green weak. So in uh, normally, so there are 8% of the men have this uh, color vision deficiency. And I remember that it's also 1% of the female have this color vision deficiency. So this is how the people uh, are perceived uh, the lights, the different colors with CVD. So for normal people, they can tell uh, the hues okay, uh, from all the wavelengths. And for people with CVD, so they may just can tell those three or two types of the hues. And especially that uh, when we talk about the traffic light colors, so green and also uh, red colors, and you can see that um, people with CVD can really not can't tell those difference. Okay, and if we put use those green light traffic light colors um, on visualizations, this is how it look like. So you can see that. Um, people will with CVD will not be able to tell the difference between the red and also uh, green. Okay, so if you zoom in, you can see they are very similar. Okay, so it's very impossible to tell the difference. Okay, between a dark red and also the dark green. So a better choice is that we should use blue and also orange. So the, which is more colorblind friendly. Especially like you, you look at the, this um, orange and also blue. And for people with CVD, so uh, it's very different. OK, and you can see how easy this is to see even under color vision deficiency simulation. So the blue is easy to see even as orange tends to be a shade of brown. So this is a great example that using the uh, diverging color where uh, we are using the blue and also orange so which um, uh, is this is diverging color schema so that work very well is also color blind friendly and this is a, another example that using orange gray and also blue colors okay so that is an excellent um, contrast between the colors and even for people that with CVD so it's not only about green and also red. So to be more accurate, it should be that we should not use red, green, and also orange, and also brown together. OK, so that is because in this CVD simulation, you can see it's very hard to tell the differences. OK, we also should try to avoid using a purple with a blue. OK, so because you can see in this uh, simulation, you can see it's also very hard to tell. 
and in some scenarios you may be forced into the traffic light colors okay uh, where you cannot uh, create accommodations so in this case um, there are some ways that can help you make the situation better so one solution is that you can change the brightness so for example if you are using a dark red and a light green and you can see on the simulation so the difference it will be bigger for the people with CVD okay and Another example is that you can add some blue to the red and also green, okay? And also in the simulation, you can see that works pretty well, okay? Uh, so this is an example that we can see even we are using green and also blue, but we are not using the pure green and also pure blue, but we added some blue, sorry, a pure green and also pure red. We added some blue to both colors. And we can see in the simulation, it worked pretty well. OK, uh, so when we talk about using colors, so keep in mind that uh, CVD is pretty uh, common. And so we should try to avoid using red green uh, colors. And also for continuous data, so we should use sequential or the diverging color schemas. Uh, for categorical data, we should use categorical colors. And however, we should limit the number of the colors we are using for the discrete or the categorical data. So normally under five is ideal. OK, so limit the number of the colors that uh, on your visualizations. So this is an example that using bar chart to show the sales. And so when we add colors, uh, we can see immediately tell that, OK, so the um, tables or tablets and also the bookcase actually are not making profit even we have a lot of sales and also as a convention that we use orange to indicate a negative and also use blue to indicate the positive okay um, and also keep in mind that uh, when we are using bar chart and also when we are using colors so people have very accurate perception about the lens so we know that okay so this one probably is half of this one. But people cannot tell that kind of comparison by using colors. So it's or not, you cannot say, okay, so this is half of this blue. Okay, or this is twice of that blue. So so colors uh, just play can play general information, but not specifics. Okay, so again, do not use too much colors because colors we are using a short memory of the audience uh, so that if you're using too many colors so that's required that uh, you need to check reference the legend a lot of times okay so that is not the best practice of using too much colors and also people cannot tell if you're using too many colors okay uh, uh, say so let's say the example so if you're using too many colors so there always will be some colors that are hard to distinguish, even people without the color deficiencies. Okay, so again, people can only di distinguish eight colors at a time, so can limit the number of colors beneath five. Okay, and also uh, when we're using colors, so color is relative, not absolute. Okay, so we see this example. We saw this example in our first lecture. So make sure that uh, we are using consistent background when we are using colors. So what is a good color design? So uh, sometimes it's a gift. So some people have great uh, feelings in uh, in design colors. Some people may not. So you need to try. Um, you need to practice. And the judgment is also subjective. So uh, some people may just like your colors. Some people may not like. So it's very uh, common. Uh, so one recommend recommendation I can give is that uh, so normally you can pay, prepare multiple plans. So multiple different type of color combinations or color designs. And in most cases, in some cases, your clients may like the worst design. Okay, 
And also another recommendation is, is very important is that you should learn from those good examples. OK, so here I listed some resources that you may want to check out very frequently, so especially the number one that is Tableau Public. And we will talk about Tableau Public later this semester. So this gives you a lot of great visualizations, uh, either color design or the way that you design their dashboard. Uh, charts, etc. And also the the other two websites are also very great resources.